All right, tech family, I've been so sick with the flu for the last week, you can probably hear it in my voice. It's frustrating as I was on such a roll with new videos. Anyway, I had to hop on today because something super rare happened. I purchased a device that I like and I couldn't find any gating issues with. Unbelievable. But every now and then I stumble upon something good. So today I'm going to tell you why I'm really enjoying my new Samsung S23 Plus phone and why I selected it over the other phones out there. When it comes to using a mobile phone, I'm one of those zombies that you see walking around the streets, you know, headphones on, completely immersed in their phone. I could literally pass my own mother on the street and I probably wouldn't even notice it was her. Now that's partly because I've lived in New York City for the last 13 years and it is loud. And this gives me a bit of an escape, but it's partly because of years of social media use. I now suffer from this need of constant stimulation. Has someone messaged me? Who's messaged me? Etc. Heck, I need so much stimulation, I normally walk around with a YouTube video playing in the background while at the same time I'm using another app. Anyway, this results in very heavy battery use, and as I'm often out and about for many hours, battery life has been a huge issue for me in the past. I had to carry an external battery everywhere I went. That was until Samsung released their Galaxy Ultra phone in 2021. That was the first phone where I didn't have any battery issues at all. However, that phone was rather large and cumbersome, especially when I had it in my back pocket where it would stick out quite a bit. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and after about a year and a half of using it, I dropped it several times when in India. Note, for anyone planning to travel to a foreign, mobile phone dependent country, bring a spare phone. It was super hard to get around without Google Maps and Uber. Anyway, phone broke and I needed a new one. I originally had my heart set on getting the new iPhone 14 Pro Max. I'd like to start creating YouTube shorts and TikToks, you know, vlog style videos, and I felt having a good camera always on me would encourage me to do that. I was really excited about the iPhone 14's Pro Max's supposed amazing camera for videos, especially having watched a ton of YouTubers hype it up. But after getting the iPhone 14 Pro Max, there were many things I didn't like about it. It was heavy to hold and too wide to be comfortable for my small hands. I also found the dynamic island extremely annoying. I'm watching a movie and there is this black pill shaped thing prominently on the screen. And I hated the fact that it charged via a lightning connector. I missed my Android phones that when I travel, I could share the same USB-C charger that I use for my laptop. And lastly, I didn't like that I could only use iMessage on my Mac laptops. I test a lot of Windows laptops for this channel, and I like that with Android phones there is a web interface for texting that I can access my messages from. It's funny, I hear a ton of people say they won't leave Apple's ecosystem because of iMessage. I'm the opposite. I can't use Apple's iPhone because of iMessage. Anyway, I returned the iPhone and bought the Samsung S22 Plus. I liked that it was smaller than the Ultra and lighter, yet it still had a big screen and supposedly large battery. I did consider the new iPhone 14 Plus by the way too. That phone has the same big form factor as the Pro Max, but it is substantially lighter. But it, the 14 Plus, it just doesn't fix any of the other issues that I had with the Pro Max. So, as I previously had a great experience with my prior Samsungs, I bought the S22 Plus on a nice sale, as it had been out for a while, but I didn't like it. Firstly, it wasn't fast, especially when compared to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It felt noticeably slower and at times outright laggy. Secondly, its battery life was rough. It was significantly worse than my Ultra or my iPhone 14 Pro Max. I would run out of battery after only a couple of hours watching YouTube. And its under the screen fingerprint reader often didn't work, which by the way was an issue that my prior S21 Ultra had. So when the S23 Plus was announced, I decided to try the new one. From the moment I opened it up, I have been delighted by this phone. It literally fixed almost every issue I had with my prior Samsung phones. It is noticeably faster than the older S22 Plus. The under the screen fingerprint reader is finely accurate and fast. The battery life is very good. I'm no longer feeling that I can't make it through a day of heavy usage. The phone, it looks physically nicer. And to my surprise, the camera is a lot better. I've hated using Samsung cameras as the photos tend to be way too saturated. Pictures, they just don't look natural and the colors are really inaccurate. On the new S23 Plus, that is less pronounced. Photos look a bit more natural. Definitely not as natural as on the iPhone, but better. 
and it has all the things I like about the Plus range. A large screen, yet super comfortable to hold in your hands. As the phone, it isn't too heavy or too wide. And it is cheaper than an iPhone, especially as there are often great deals to be had on Samsungs. At the time I made this video, Best Buy currently has a deal going with a significant discount and they are giving big dollar values for trade-ins. That's where I bought mine, by the way, and the deal I took advantage of. I'll place a link to it down below. And I'll also post the kickstand case down there too. I find a kickstand, those cases, they just substantially improve the overall usability of these large screen phones. Side note folks, as I'm sure you've noticed on my channel, I don't try to sell you stuff. The only things I plug are tech I actually buy myself and use. There is one small thing that I don't like about this phone though, and that's the Samsung apps that it comes with. They are very duplicative of apps that Google already provides. I read Jack Welch's book Winning, phenomenal book, and it really resonated with me. He was the CEO of General Electric during its heyday. He talks about the importance of being number one or number two in a product category, and those are the ones that capture all the profit. If you aren't number one or number two and don't have a strong chance of getting there, exit that business and invest the money into one that you do. And that's the case here. These Samsung apps, they just aren't competitive, and the pop-ups that suggest them are annoying. I'd suggest Samsung invest their R&D dollars that they are spending developing these on something else. For example, I'd prefer that this screen had a variable refresh rate that went lower than 48 hertz. This would increase the battery life because in instances where there is no movement on screen, the phone wouldn't have to refresh the screen as much. The iPhone 14 Pros go right down to 1 hertz. As I said though, the battery life is still good enough on this phone, especially in my use case where my phone is mostly displaying things that are moving on screen. This would have just been a little icing on the cake. Oh, and on the display, I do want to address something. The S23 Plus's display isn't as pixel dense as other high-end large screen phones. It has a resolution of 2340 by 1080, which is 393 pixels per inch. The S23 Ultra is crisper at 500 pixels per inch, and so are the large screen iPhones at around 460. I thought this would bother me, and perhaps I'd notice things looking pixelated. It did not. To my eyes, content looked sharp enough on screen. And lastly, I know I only talked about Apple vs Samsung. I am aware the Pixel 7 Pro is meant to be very good, and I got to be honest with you all, I didn't consider it because A, I ended up satisfied with this one, the S23 Plus, and B, it didn't look as sexy or was as comfortable to hold. If you feel it's really worth trying, or another phone for that matter, let me know in the comments below and perhaps I'll try one. As you probably know, I don't normally review phones, I mainly review laptops, but I thought I'd share my experiences on this phone with you as that's why I started this channel to begin with, to help you make the right buying decisions based on my own experiences. Well, that's all for today folks. If you like this video, you know what to do, smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter for updates on my crazy life and early looks at hot new tech. Seriously guys, in the last six months, I've been to Bangalore, India, Mumbai, Frankfurt, Germany, Berlin, Sydney, Australia, Silicon Valley, Chicago, New York, Arizona, it's been bonkers. And on that complete overshare, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to hear a bit more about how I ended up living this insane lifestyle. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.